the foreign medical college must be approved by the nmc what does this mean nmc so what happens here is when you get exposed to various speciality you get a judgment as to which of the specialties is interesting and in which one will you pursue your md in most of the kids like i said come back to india there are few who appear for usmle and club hello my dear students welcome to pw english this is chaitra your botany teacher and in today's session let us see if you should be doing mbbs abroad or i will also give you a very fundamental question at the end of the session so do stay back it's going to be a very a short session because i'm going to give you a very basic information this is where you start but this is enough to cover almost all your doubts about doing mbbs abroad first of all should you do it or not try to get a seat as much as possible in india of course your financial condition will matter a lot here how much what is your affordability and i repeat please do not go on to take excess financial loans just for the sake of getting a seat and then end up spending that loan for the 10 15 or 20 years of your life please don't do that right whatever risk you are taking at least for now you should be taking calculated risk you should not fall flat on your face just because you desired for something very strongly at that point in time so be very clever when you're making this choice and neat 2025 was difficult for everybody you can hear that all around social media and probably all around you and i've told you the cut off is going to be lower because the paper was difficult now this is something which we already know and it logically makes sense the number of seats have not reduced naturally the number of students qualifying also will not reduce how many seats are there in fact they've increased this year that many students will get admitted in mbps so try to get your seat as much as possible from india only but let us say you are you are still um, you still badly desire to do mbbs and you're not able to do it in india because affordability is a big issue then what shall you do then you can do mbbs abroad what is the criteria let's see this is the basic criteria that you need to do mbbs in india also you should have passed your pcb with 15 50% of aggregate your uh, neat qualification of course is mandatory what do you mean by neat qualification the marks that you obtain i'm not saying you should be a meritorious student but in that case you would get a seat in india only there's nothing wrong in doing uh, mbbs abroad please don't there are many students pursuing so neat qualification is mandatory last year i suppose somewhere about 164 165 were the qualifying marks that's it so let us cap it at the same for now please don't start <laughs> commenting in the comment section without looking at the entire video stay tuned the foreign medical college must be approved by the nmc what does this mean nmc has released a guideline which has to be followed by the countries where you are planning to uh, uh, attend your mbbs course okay the course duration should be at least 54 months 54 months comes up to for about 4 and a half years and 12 month of internship after that 4 and a half years 12 month of internship what happens in this internship you get exposed to various specialities okay let's say ophthalmology um, and then obg department example i'm giving you so what happens here is when you get exposed to various speciality you get a judgment as to which of the specialties is interesting and in which one will you pursue your md in so that is what this does so it gives you hands on experience now what does nmc mandate for student it says complete at least 12 months of internship in the same country where you have done your mbbs gain hands on experience in hospital affiliated with the university follow the clinical exposure so you are going to get clinical exposure you are going to talk to patients you are going to attend them you come to know of so many basic things that are being followed in the hospital including the exposure to various specialties so this is what the 12 month of internship will do once that is done let us come to this like i said if you are a student who has qualified neat last year let's say so 3 years of validity now last year you wrote neat this year also you wrote the last year uh, neat marks 
but let let us say for example you have written neat there's three years of validity within that th three years you have to apply for some reason if you did not apply last year you could apply this year so need should be qualified a three years of validity is there one year internship you have to do once you have studied in whatever foreign country you are studying in you have to get the license to practice also <coughs> which is easily given not a big problem if you have qualified mbbs you will be getting a license to practice the license is like a document from the government saying that this kid has done MBBS and now is ready to treat patients. That is what license to practice means. Okay. Now, what are the countries? These are the countries that follow the rules given by NMC. Nepal, for the entire course of MBBS, somewhere about 60 lakh would be the fee. In India, a deemed university charges somewhere about 60 to 90 lakh per year for MBBS, a deemed university. I am not talking about government uh, seat. Bangladesh, 45 to 50 lakh, same with Georgia and Serbia approximately. This could vary a little bit this year. I am talking about the last year fees. This year because every year the cost increases, right, for various things. That's why. Then in Russia also, 45 to 50 lakh would be the fees per, uh, I am saying the entire course of MBBS, okay, entire course of MBBS, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan, 25 to 30 lakh would be the fees, 25 to 30 lakh would be the fees. There are a lot of third party agencies which might get in touch with you saying we will help you even if you have not qualified NEET, even if you have not written NEET. We will help you get a seat, you know, abroad. We have contacts, blah, 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 so and so. Be very careful. There are a lot of fraud agencies like that. You can, in fact, directly approach these colleges and then make sure that that entire consultancy fees is waived off. Next. Fine, you did your MBBS, you did your internship, you got your license to practice. Now you decide to come back to India for doing MD. Then what happens? This question most of you might have. Then in that case, you will have to appear for an examination called NEXT, National Exit Test. Qualify that so that you can practice in India. Okay. And for you to practice in India, there is one bare minimum requirement that so much of marks you have to get in MBBS. That, how much marks is that? MB, uh, NMC guidelines will also tell you about the same. <coughs> and if needed, you can undergo another internship in an hospital in India, which is of course NMC recognized hospital. Okay, that is if required, not necessary or if you have cleared next also, some people directly start practicing. If you are appearing for next, that means you have got minimum passing marks in MBBS, which is set by NMC. Right, that is about coming back to India. Most of the kids come back to India, practice or do their MD here. What about other countries? So, we are done with India. What about US, Canada? Now, you decide, no, I want to go to US or Canada. You will have to write an examination called USMLE. Once you write the examination, once you qualify, you will ap apply for the colleges that you want to. And then they will give you a call for an interview, face-to-face -face interview in the sense, a virtual interview. And once you clear that interview, the colleges will roll out and Invitation saying that yes, you are qualified, you can come and do MD in our college. No, I want to go to UK. Then you will have to write an examination called PLAB, P L A B. If you want to do, uh, do your MD in Dubai, then DHA, Australia, AMC, Germany, AMC. This is the examination that you would want to write in various countries if you want to pursue MD. If you want to pursue MD. Most of the kids, like I said, come back to India. There are few who appear for USMLE and PLAB. USMLE is a difficult examination as compared to all. PLAB is okay. This is what I've heard from students. So, yeah. And once you qualify these, like I said, I repeat, you are eligible to do MD in these respective countries. Right? So, it's your choice. What do you want to do after you've done your MBBS? Now, this is a very brief about the entire MBBS program that can be done abroad. Now, the question arises again, should you be doing it or not? I am tell, telling you, I am repeating it, try to do it, try
try to get a seat as much as possible in India so that you can get rid of all of this and you know you are you are within the country and especially if you're planning to do MD here uh, try to take a seat here only and one more point I would want to add if at all you do MBBS in these countries and you're planning to go to US Canada UK or even right next in India there are some colleges in the specific countries who offer coaching also like you took need coaching in 11th and 12th they do offer coaching for these examinations also you will have to find out which college you're going to and if it follows if it gives coaching or not because you would want to do MD, MD most of you at least so this is another thing that is to be pointed now comes another fundamental question NEET 2025 went by many of the students have got demotivated some are literally commenting saying that I'm done with NEET I'm not going to write it again and so and so and you might be a first time uh, appearing student in NEET you might be a second time appearing student in NEET now Please first find out, do a lot of back thinking and see if this dream of becoming doctor was yours or somebody else's. See, sometimes what happens as we grow up, as we are growing up, there are few things that are told to us by our surrounding, uh, advertently or inadvertently, I don't know about that, but it does make an impact. Like somebody saying that you're so good with medicines, you know which medicine is to be given for what, you should become a doctor. Or you would have uh, done, you know, maybe given um, some kind of a medicine to some elderly in your family and they recovered all of a sudden the next day and they would have told you that, oh, your uh, energy is very positive, you're a healer, why not become a doctor? Or you might be very good, exceptionally good in biology and you decided I'll become a doctor. Right. Or it could also be this that from a very young age you've been told that, you know, you become a doctor such a prestige symbol, um, a good way to earn money, all of that. So th that does from a very lower you know, class, if that has been told to you continuously, it naturally will make a dent, it will make an impact. And now you have decided I'm going to become a doctor. Now, sometimes what happens, all of this together and you have an internal dream that I want to do this here. This is it. I cannot do anything else. I am seeing myself doing only this. Do that then. Then become a doctor. But no, if you do a lot of back thinking and you feel there's a detachment between your dream and between what you've been told, then take a stand, this is the time. Don't be afraid, don't be nervous, talk to your elders, tell them that maybe I am not going to do this. If you're good in biology, that doesn't become an alone reason alone to do MBBS, right? You, there are so many parallel fields that you can you know, pursue, approach and all, of course earn money. Earning money is not a big deal, especially when you're passionate about something. That field might be not doing that well currently. Okay, you never know. So, if you're passionate, you will do well, including teaching. And I'm telling you this very confidently because I am a teacher. It depends upon how passionate you are. Because you cannot fake anything for a long time. And especially in a field where you're constantly in touch with people who are probably having lower energy than you because they are suffering of a particular condition, they're not well. You will have to be mentally sound, you will have to be involved in your profession no matter what. No matter what, imagine that. Talking to somebody, treating somebody, you cannot treat anybody with a half heart. So you'll have to be at your game every day, day in and day out. And believe me, there are students who get motivated by this kind of service that they provide. I have spoken to students who have told me, I have opted for general surgery in uh, you know, MD or I have chosen a department which is hectic because that's my fuel, talking to patients, treating them. If you are that person, do this. Don't look back. What about people who will start earning much before you? That's okay. You will make up for all those earnings when you start earning finally. For that, of course, what you have done in MBBS, how good you are with patients, how good you are with diagnosis, all of this will matter a lot. As you get into the field, you will come to know what should be done, what can be done. Right? So having said this, think what you should be doing and if it is your real passion or not and then continue. If you have any further doubts, 
let me know hopefully i'll be able to help thank you